Um, in this lesson, we are going to have a look at this. Um, what does def uh, change mean? What does this colon mean? What does do t mean? What does a colon in front and a colon behind actually mean? So we're going to have a look at this. Uh, and to do this, we need to move away from Rails and try this on on its own. So cd dot dot and make directory uh, called Ruby. Change into the Ruby directory and uh, make another directory called lib library and then touch um, into library create a new file called persons.ruby and then we want to make another file called main.rb and you can clear that. So what we've basically um, done is go to desktop and our projects uh, we've created a Ruby folder, we've created a library folder and we have a main and in library we have a person library. That's what we've done. Okay, so sublime dots and we open up um, our new practice folder. Okay, so double click uh, on person to have that open. So what we do, we create um, a module. So it's a module, greet, so that's how it's done. And within modules, we define what's called methods. So method definition, we'll call this introduce. And basically I want this method uh, to simply introduce myself. My name is Kingsley and n. Okay, well, we can add another method definition, uh, study, and this basically says uh, Kingsley is, uh, Kingsley studies software testing. Okay, so that's, um, this is a module. A module uh, is a reusable code that you can use in different parts of your project. So let's say we have main.rb, and we want to use uh, our files from uh, our module first we require the file that that module is um, created in and then we include the actual module uh, within our main.rb so this is you know um, just bringing this in this is how rails work and now that we've done that we want to use these methods call the methods and to do that you simply just say introduce all right, so to run it, make sure that you're in your Ruby folder and just say Ruby space main.rb. Okay, so we haven't exactly said uh, to print. So I'm going to come here and just say P, uh, P for print. So when we uh, run this program again, it should uh, run introduce and say something. So that's it. My name is Kingsley. Um, has been printed on the screen. So we've just created a method, we've run that method definition, and that's the first part. So now, when we um, come down here, we could say study, and this will call the other method. Now it says King's study software testing. All right, so now we can see, uh, or slightly understand this um, code here. So method definition calls create table method. All right, so let's see what else we can do with a method. So methods, um, what if I wanted to control the name of the person being introduced? What if I want to say introduce Jane like this, for example? Uh, let's try and run this. Obviously, there will be errors, but we'll learn from errors. So the error says we have wrong number of arguments. So we have a new word for our program vocabulary. We have one um, argument provided where zero was required. So we now know that there's something called arguments that methods accept. So we can give this introduced method an argument called name. So when we call this, we can put this as parentheses like this, it still works, but it's a bit more readable if we just left it out like this. So now that we have uh, passed in an argument into this method, we can basically use it um, within the method like this. So I want to uh, add this here, put plus sign. So I'm basically joining uh, the string on the left and the string on the right together. So if I run this again, oh, my Jane is Kingsley. Now that wasn't, um, that wasn't what I was trying to do. So I've added this in the wrong, wrong place. So just undo that. Uh, what I want to do is get rid of Kingsley and say plus and then put our 
argument name there. All right, so when we run this now, it says, my name is Jane. So we have learned about arguments, but look at this plus sign. What's this plus sign actually doing? So it happens, this plus sign has a, a word attached to it, which is called concatenation. Um, it's not here. If I, if I just search, um, concatenate, that's it. So it was, it was right under my nose. So that's concatenation. So it's, it's a good word to write down. Um, programming is really about just learning the different words. So this is, is used here to join uh, something to a string. So concatenate is what is referred to. But what happens if we put it in here instead, if we put name there um, without concatenating it? And let's see what happens. We run this, it says my name is name. So basically um, anything within quotations are, it will be considered as a string. But there's another way of doing this. So I could say name like this, and really single quotations um, are for characters and double quotations are for multiple characters or strings. So it should really be double quotations. So now that we've done uh, slightly different, it says my name is Jane. So it works exactly as we want it to. All right, so we could change Jane to Ken and everything works immediately as suspected. Uh, so what um, what exactly is this that we've written? So this is another word. So this is interpolate, uh, interpolation. So it's a different way of making use of variables within strings. So we'll put this in here and we can print with it. So essentially what happens is when we say double quotation, it says, oh, there's a string and it reads from left to right. But when we put this here, we say first evaluate this and then read from left to right. So another word to remember, interpolation, interpolate. Um, you can use that to search when you're stuck. And um, that's what programming is about, learning new programming words. Uh, so we've learned about um, a few things, uh, method definition uh, and arguments. So we'll carry on in the next two um, videos and I'll see you in the next lesson.